The following program is intended for a mature audience. Viewer discretion is advised. This I've got to see. It's worth watching, so stay tuned. If you aren't here before the show, you are fucking missing out. Welcome to The C-Note Show, Thursday, June 3rd, 2021. This is Miss Cynthia Cruz, the only woman allowed on this show for her feminine and professional perspective. <laughs> I switched it around, fuckers. Welcome to- <laughs> I'm pumped now. Jason got me going. Uh, get on to me. Get on to me. No, 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 no. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> Miss Cynthia Cruz, welcome. Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. I haven't seen you for a few minutes. Yes, it's been a long time yes oh do you see how she touched me she's smart she made that physical connect not in that jason's like where yeah hans yeah buddy we if you can't tell we love being here with you guys it's 11 11 yo 11 baby welcome to the c note show our theme this week is don't apologize for your sexuality how to be confident sexually stop apologizing for your sexuality uh, I, I hope there's no three-year-olds that can any longer hear that. I don't think they could hear this in the first place. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's go and jump into the show. Yeah. Cynthia sexcapade spot. I'm gonna do a preview right now, which you share about the last 10 minutes of the show. Let's get into the sexcapade spot for today. Get in on the inside, get in on the inside. What well, says fine art America in the bottom. Thank you. Fine art America. They do good work. They do, yes. <laughs> and on the, on her hip there, is that shaped like a key? To unlock the bottoms, yes. Yes, <laughs> you need you need. It's a key to unlock something for sure. And oh, so get on and I don't know if that was on purpose, but get in on the inside. There's a key on the side. We're gonna share you how the key to unlock. Use your imagination, gentlemen. I'll just leave it at that. Get in on the inside. That's gonna be Cynthia's sexcapade spot for today. Welcome to the show. I actually copied the, uh, oh, I got to jump into the staircase of courage question for today, of course, but I actually copied that same question from yesterday from the forum, where I, <laughs> Jeff's fucking up all over the place. Yesterday, I actually cut off part of the question. So I grabbed the same one from yesterday, which is phenomenal. It's about frame and how to bring this way of being into your marriage, into your relationship, especially if things aren't going very well right? How to bring this grounded, confident, mojo-filled man that we all, of course, practice our practice being. That's why you're here. Not only for your own confidence and success in the world, success in career, but because you want to have success in relationship. You want to keep polarity, masculine, feminine. You want her to stay turned on for you, hot for you. Not in every moment, right? She's not going to like you in every moment, but she, but you want her to, to desire you and stay hot for you over the long term within your relationship. That's what we're here for. If you're here for, you know, how to get a girlfriend or how to date around, there's books for that that we talk about, like Dating Essentials for Men with Robert Glover. But here we're talking about long-term monogamous relationship, just so you know what you're getting yourself into here, guys. You're here because you want to know how to provide safety, inspiration, and sexual leadership in your relationship. You want to know exactly how to do that. So as long as you're not donkey punching a kangaroo right now, <laughs> that rules out Jason. As long as you're not donkey punching a kangaroo, I want you to punch this into the chat. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Jason. That's right. That's right. Yo, I don't know how we pick. Jason's going to have to give me a class on how to use um, OBS, right? I think it's called. Yeah, I got ha, I got the acronym right. OBS and how to bring those funny, fun things in there. Look at that shit. You fancy motherfucker. All right, let's jump over to Staircase of Courage. What happens in your body when you are not confident? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know what happens in your body when you're not confident? Okay. Do you know? And if right now you're thinking, I have no idea what you're talking about, Jeff. The answer is no. <laughs> okay. And so let me elaborate. You know, does your chest get tight? From does like energy rush up the back of your head? What happens with me when I get like angry or frustrated? Energy starts to rush up my neck kind of come into my head like this which i've talked about before 
awareness of what happens in your body when you're having different emotional states is the key, the key to starting to learn how to control yourself emotionally. Okay, you can talk about it after the fact and you know you can sit down and talk therapy and all that stuff, but when you know when you're flooded when your heart rate goes out over 100 beats a minute as John Gottman and the Gottman research would say, you're not you're no longer in your frontal lobe. So, you've got to start being able to catch yourself, good or bad, positive or negative, excited or depressed or whatever that may be of what it feels like in your body. So, I'm asking you right now specifically, what happens in your body when you are not confident okay and it'll be very consistent it'll be very consistent for you certain emotions triggered by the similar thing will be very consistent all right so punch that into the chat what happens when you're not confident in your body let's go and jump into uh, a question from the forum so here's a new one and this is the participation section of our program so when i put my hand over my mouth that's me shutting up and practicing holding tension and I do that because I'm teaching y'all that all of us must learn how to better hold tension. And by the way, I bet you already do. I bet you already do hold tension. Like when your boss is pissed off or something, you don't go tell him to fuck himself, which is what I'm going to share about my son here in a few minutes. <laughs> you don't tell him to go fuck himself because guess what would happen? Not good things, right? So you're holding tension. Or how about a police officer pulls you over, right? You're at least I fear me. There's tension in your body, at least to some extent, right? For some of us more than others, certainly. So uh, when I put my hand over my mouth and I ask you guys to jump in, I'm going to give you about 10, uh, 20 or 30 seconds, 20 or 30 seconds. And if nobody wants to talk after 30 seconds, that's cool. I'll come back in. But I want to give you all opportunity. We're here for you. We're here to connect. We're here to ask and uh, see if you want to ask questions and jump in for your experience. So post in the forum. Hi, all. Any tips on creating space when at home and not looking or being false? When not looking or being false. Hmm. My wife said this weekend, I'm still hovering around. Oh, okay. I'm still hovering around her. I actually thought I was doing well, giving space. Face palm. I'm out at the gym three times a week. I'm popping out for coffee or a drive, doing things outside at home, taking the kids on small adventures and activities, playing with the kids, or worst case, going and reading a book in another room or listening to music somewhere inside or outside. It feels like I've got loads going on and it's not natural. I wasn't a couch potato previously, but the intent is to give space. Hint, hint. Okay, what's his intent? It starts with space, but what should it really be about, right? Obvious huge hint there. I did ask if she wanted to go for a short walk or a coffee after she was back from work as I had two days where I was off last week and she called me out on it this weekend. How dare you ask me to go for a walk? Well, we're gonna talk about that. She spoke to me and said she feels pressure as I'm around and asking her things to help, asking her things to help and she still doesn't feel attracted to me like she should be yet and is trying to give it time and see if it helps that she has now started to work mornings to get some space and something else to do now the kids are all in kindergarten and school age. It's likely to be the end of the year before I start working in the office out of town again and business trips around the world. I feel like I'm finding things to do and having to make myself scarce and it shows. It also feels like she's trying to sort this out in her head and wants to be able to be reattract to be reattracted to me, although it's not happening right now. Well, it's not happening right now. All right, what would you do if you're this man? It seems pretty apparent where he is. He, it seems like he described the spot pretty well. So what do you see here? Read between the lines a little bit, especially those of you that have been around this work, right? I want you guys to jump in. So unmute yourself and come on in. Everybody's shy. They want to see the kangaroos donkey punch each other again. Careful what you ask for. Patrick might come on. <laughs> All right, Chelsea. So, okay, look at this. It's a first. They're like, is Jeff real? You're testing my boundaries. <laughs> is Jeff really going to sit there for? Yes. All right. I didn't shut up the whole time, though. It's probably a fail. Randy's going to call me out on that. You're right. Randy, you got me. Randy's got his camera on. I love when you guys keep your camera on. Laundro's here. Hans is here. Jordan, Jason, Bernard, Ian, Chris, Andy, Mr. Oliver, close off. Bruce is here. Good to see you, Bruce. JT is here. Patrick, Richard, you guys are fantastic. So, Cynthia, let me ask you. I want to work backwards on this here. It's, she's trying to sort out in her head and wants to be able to be reattracted to me, although it's not happening right now. What does that mean? What do you think he means? Is he on the right track here as far as 
she's trying to sort this out in her head and she wants to be reattracted to me. So as a professional in this field, Cynthia and I have a combined 50,000 hours in this field. Been in this, she's been doing this work and now actually men's work for the past 20 years. So I want to ask you, um, what, what would you say there? Is she really trying to work this out in her head? Is that how the best way to think about this? That's a really interesting statement he made. Um, you know, what he could be observing in her is she's kind of holding on to the things, the patterns that have been in the relationship and using them as, as you know, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to let him in, or he always does this. So she has this story. And when he acts in new energy, uh, she might find herself relax from that old story. And then it's kind of like a, like, no, I need to hold back on to this because this keeps me stable in times of turmoil. So he could be watching her affected by his new uh, ways of being and then kind of pulling back into the old. So she's going back and forth like that. Um, so that's what she's feeling? Yeah. <laughs> so there's my guy question. Where is this going? Okay, so that's what she's feeling. Like that whole thing is what she's potentially feeling? Yes. Okay, so how about the she's trying to work this out in her head? Is that the right way for him to think about this? So no is kind of what you're telling me. Well, that's the feminine way of working things out in her head. She's going to go with like, I feel this way. And then in her mind, she's like, well, no, I can't. And then no, I got to hold this other energy in my body. So that's her way of thinking things through. It's going to be like, follow this emotion. No, follow this emotion. Follow this, okay. follow this. Okay. So she's not really trying to work it out in her head. She's following her emotions, right? And making sense of what she feels. Okay. How do you think she's making sense of what she feels? Or what do you, what do you think that she feels in this man's scenario? He's making himself busy. He's trying to do what she's saying. Hint, hint. He's trying to do what she's saying. Mm -hmm right? But it's not working. And I'm so bit, how could I do this any better? How could I give her space any better? I asked her for coffee and she this weekend castrated me for it. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that feels like she is needing almost more space. Um, that she, there hasn't been a really adequate separation of energy. She hasn't felt him truly kind of own what he wants to do. Um, it probably, from what he was saying, it seems like he's still kind of wanting an end result out of him taking space. And so there's still a stickiness between them. Uh, so when he's asking her to do something, it still feels like a burden or a trigger mm. to her, as opposed to him truly kind of doing what's feeling good for himself as a man. And she feels that like, oh, like, what is he doing? And that that spark of like reattraction and interest so that when he does ask, there's kind of a new platform for her to step onto. Oh, beautifully said. So she's feeling like he's not offering her that ability to have us a, a spark of attraction. In, in, in her roundabout way, this woman from the post, his wife, that's what she's sharing with him. That's why she's like, you asked me for coffee. That's still not enough space. Yeah. Yeah. So who, is anyone in this spot right now? How does this resonate with you? Do you have a quick story about this kind of spot? Come on in, unmute yourself. Bruce, this is where everyone is seeing how much I'm going to squirm. I, perp I do this every <laughs> single show. I do this every single show, Bruce. Yeah. Awesome, Ian. Go for it. It seems to be there's still a, there's an expectation um, for the end of this. He's, he still seems to be doing things to, and looking for um, a result at the end is an attachment to outcome. Yeah, do and you relate to that? Seem, it does seem to be still hummingbird. I mean, I, yeah, I can. And I, <clears throat> back, uh, whew, getting on for a year, year and a half ago now, back in sort of my, in the nice guy frame as well. <sighs> I was hanging around the house. Okay, you're, you're still, you're in a different room, but you're still in the house. There's, there's still that, that tension and that's that presence there. Unless you're getting out and doing and completely separating yourself from from that situation, you're you're still having a presence and, a, and, a, and an impact on on the other person. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and her on us as well. I was speaking to a one-on-one -on -one client two days ago, similar kind of situation. And if you're the one that still wants the relationship, right, Ian? If you're the one that still wants the relationship, and she's around, and she like this poster 
doesn't really want the relationship right now. By the way, sorry, news flash. Okay, doesn't mean you, doesn't mean you need to get divorced right now, but in your head, okay, if the woman is done with the old relationship and you're still hoping to like go back and re, where can we go back to where we were and all that stuff? Okay, it feels like chasing, and you're just you're trying to resuscitate a jo- a zombie. You know, you're like trying to walk along with a zombie and she feels that, right? So Ian, what would you say is the best advice mentally in his own head for this? So he doesn't have this emotional hangover being around her and can also give her space because that's what happens is we as men get that emotional hangover. Uh, Ian, what would you say? Yeah, the phrase, I mean, the the one that stuck with me very in the initial stages was taking a half step back. So just physically stepping back and just giving that space even in, in, in contact as well you, you I mean I had the urge to um to give her a hug or to touch and it was just not appropriate at the time and it was as I've said before and she said to me that it felt like an invasion at that time in, in her space physical space as well so that's that's the advice that I I took on board and would give certainly at this initial stage is take a step back and then get out and start looking for your own passions I mean it seems to be it's, knocking around the house a little bit I used to find something a little bit more uh, productive and adventurous outside i think you know yeah yeah thanks for jumping in yeah i appreciate it. i press pause on you yeah so this man is doing the right actions so again the three forms of confidence and what we teach are the behavioral skills the emotional conditioning the emotional confidence and control and then the the spiritual why so why are you doing this so this man in the post he's doing the right skills And he knows why he's doing it, but he doesn't have the right emotional frame yet. Okay. He's still doing what she's asking him to do. That's a following frame. That's not a leading masculine frame. Okay. So that in and of itself is not going to create polarity. We talked about that yesterday, how it deflates polarity. Uh, And also he doesn't know. So I told another man, the hard part of this is the emotional frame. Okay. You can read books, you can learn the exact skills, you can go do the motions, which is the start of it. But the hard part of this is integrating the new emotional frame that the old relationship is dead. Okay, a half step back here is to nothing. That's what this, that's what's going on. Even offering coffee, even offering coffee to this woman is too much. So the relation half step back is nothing. And when a half step back is nothing, that means that the current relationship version 1.0 is dead is dead okay like you got to get that through your head that does not mean you need to get divorced it does not mean anyone needs to move out but you got to get in your, that in your head so that there can be a segments of time that you live in usually three to 12 months and that's why our coaching is six to 12 months and depending on the program you're in right i don't do month to month stuff it's six to 12 months and there's a reason right? It's because you've got to get it into your body and into your soul and into your mind that version 1.0 of the marriage is in the ground. Okay, three to 12 months of men's work and on your own and finding your passion. And that has the potential to reattract her again, which I've literally lived through. And so do many men that we work with. Okay, that gives her the potential to be reattracted again. And then you might build a new bridge to version 2.0 of the marriage. If you're not version 2.0 yet, there cannot be a version 2.0 of the marriage, okay? And if you don't put the version 1.0 in the ground, you can't be version 2.0. See how this works, guys? It's not that complicated. It's just, it takes time and practice. And then there's the nuance of everyone's situation and we're living on top of each other and COVID and kids. And I don't want to leave my kids and you know I don't want to break up my family. And that's the even more difficult question is the breaking up the kids, okay? That's a whole other topic whole other topic. So we'll pause on that for now and go into some speaking of kids. <laughs> so my uh, son's mom and I broke up over six years ago when he was 11, right? He's 17 now. And my son, oh, he unsent it. He unsent the message. Oh my God, this is fucking so perfect. He just did that. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> this is so great. All right. I'm a little embarrassed at how about this, but let me, I wanted to lean in and share this with you guys. Okay. So my son has literally forever, literally since the first two weeks of kindergarten, had trouble in school, power conflicts, took him to two medical doctors, no ADD diagnosis, um, 
He's very high reading ability. So it's not like dyslexia, something like that, that was undiscovered. I became, I switched my entire career when I was 30 years old, when he was five, when he went into kindergarten, because no one in the school system could tell me what was going on with my son. Okay, that's the short version. I literally fucking left a very good income and making a lot of money in real estate and banking. In 2009, I went into, I got, I went back to school at night. I started working minimum wage to get myself in the school system, subbing, getting in the school. My first full-time job in a school was changing diapers of kids that are handicapped. Okay. And working with emotional disabilities as well. So the most severe physical disabilities, combinations of severe physical disabilities, right? Including low cognitive, bipolar, schizophrenia. Also, some kids were in gangs, massive trauma, adopted five times, okay? Those are the kids I worked with in the school system. That's my heart, right? And that's why I went into that as for my son. So my son's got a lot of confidence-ish stuff around authority, and that's totally my karma. Like, I was not, I was not an easy kid when I was young, so that's my karma, and that's fine. So we go, he's, he's taking flight lessons right now. He's becoming a pilot. He's going to get his private pilot's license. Like he's a smart kid. He's really good at what he's doing. Right. Well, he's tired this morning. I'm taking him there. I'm trying to, you know, I'm talking with him. He's really grumpy. I'm like, Hey, what's up, man. And you know, I'll pat myself on the back, handling it pretty well. Like I've got a lot of practice. You have to have a lot of practice guys. I did not handle it well at first. So by the time I, you know, drop him off at 9 a.m. this morning, I'm, I hug him. I'm like, hey, I like spending time with you. And he goes, I like spending time with you too. And that was real, you know, so we ended up pretty good. And then he texts me, oh, the lesson is actually 30 minutes later. Thanks for making me sit here. And then the next text, which I got right before the show was all caps. It was actually an hour later. Thanks a lot. Fuck you. Okay. Fuck you all caps. And, and he just deleted the message. Now, I, I figured out what happened is the trainer pushed the time back. Right? I, I dropped him off at the right time. The trainer pushed the time back. And here's, here's the punchline about all this is when I read that, I laughed. When I read, he was like, this push back. Fuck you. I chuckled to myself. Okay. Literally chuckled to myself. Then the next thought was, how, do I need to punish him? Like, how am I going to punish him? Or how am I going to handle this? I gave him a, but like this morning, I gave him a hat that I bought in Idaho when I was in Idaho visiting eight other men up there at Wine Coop's Amazing Lodge and spent a week up there. I bought him a hat, which I do every time I go out of town. I buy him a cool different hat. So I even gave him a present this morning, right? Like being cool about it. He's with his mom half the time. I picked him up from his mom's this morning, right? And after, so I'm like, okay, do I need to punish him in some way? What do I need to do? Do I need to, right? Like all these things went through my head. And the, then, took about 10 seconds for me to realize, you know what, just not responding to this right now is by far the best thing. And I use the 24 seven rule, which I talk about, you wait at least 24 hours, and bring it up within seven days, if it even still needs to be brought up. So what would have happened if I was like, you're in such big trouble, how fucking dare you say it, blah, 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 and just texted him, right? Like it's not my, or how about this one? It's not my fault, the trainer, and I had it right, believe me. Like, okay, how would have either of those, how would have either of those gone? Not good, right? Not good. So I, I fully believe that we can feel each other's energy. And at the very least for our own selves, I didn't vomit into the phone or counterattack him or anything like that. I just, I just knew, okay, I'll sleep on it. And when I see him again, I'll bring it up, right? Or if I was going to see him in an hour from now, I would have done the same thing. It's like, all right, it's not going to help for me to text him right now. It's obviously emotional over text. Let's just press pause and shelve it. But I'm to the point now, guys, he called me an asshole for a full year when he was 11, when I split with his mom. Okay. And that's another story. But I, like, I was the giant asshole, like literally called me asshole to my face, even the baseball dugout, like assistant coach to his baseball team since he was four, he was playing t-ball and everything. Called me an asshole to my face when I when he was 11 in the baseball dugout. What I do, I took him behind the dugout. We had a conversation right there. But uh, yeah, so you can, you like, you will get to the point where you can chuckle at this shit. You can laugh at this shit. You can see it for what it is that he's pissed off. He's not handling it very well. I'm the safest person for him to, you know, just fucking dump on and say, fuck you two. Doesn't make it okay. I would certainly talk with him about it. And I'll, I'll make a little joke about it the next time I see him because he did delete it. 
right? I, I saw it, right? And like, oh, I, I appreciate you deleting that message. <laughs> so I'll bring that up. But that's me sharing a little bit of my heart, a little bit more of my story with you guys that it's not like this is just because you're grounded and amazing at what you do doesn't mean you're not going to have bumps in your life. You know, it doesn't mean that Jeff has a perfect life or whatever. Everything's a unicorn in Jeff's life or all that shit. And just because I can control myself doesn't mean that I can, that I'm controlling everybody else. Like they, everyone has agency and freedom to do what they're going to do in that moment. It's how do I handle it? Right. How do I respond and not react? <laughs> so good. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm going to go and jump into the second post that I started yesterday and I got the full question this time. So I'm going to jump forward to the question and offer you guys an opportunity to jump in and ask about this. Or tell you what, if you want to put something else on the table, if you haven't been to the show for a while, or if your name is Bruce with that sexy picture of your bald head and you want to jump in, like go for it, baby. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so let me, let me read this real quick. So he's saying these words sting now because I wasn't a great man in the past. Uh, you know, it showed up in all kinds of ways, like me being a nice guy and sticking my head in the sand, right? So his question is, how do I project this mojo man, this as Steve Horseman would say, the HDM, the already in your mind, happily divorced man type of energy. How do I project that energy? I mostly believe these things about myself, like these good new things. He's doing men's work, right? I mostly believe these things about myself and tell myself that her moods don't affect mine. Okay. First of all, if they do, don't bullshit yourself, right? Like he's trying to, he's trying to lie to himself that his, her moods don't affect him. So I'd say, first of all, you got to honor it within your own self. It doesn't mean you say anything to her, okay? But it takes practice of owning your own reality. That's why I asked you guys, what does it feel like in your body when you're not confident? And he says, that's only sometimes true that her moods don't affect me. As my wife and I are separated, it can be weird at times. It's never weird when we're out at one of my son's games, but when she's home to pick up or drop off, I know I can come across with not so great energy. How the hell do I rectify that? Any good ideas or kicks in the ass y'all can offer? Unmute yourself, coming in. What would you say to this man? Any, any words of advice or tips that have helped you not uh, have you know creepy or nice guy or resentful energy when she's around? So if, if those of you that haven't, yeah, jump in. Who's coming in? Hans, please. Yeah. Um, here's some stuff. And, uh, so Hans, you're a bit choppy right now, buddy. I can't even, has, can't, can't hear what you're saying. Let's see. And a lot of times, just, okay. Um, so I was saying, it's like, my wife's going through some stuff and she's looking right at me. <laughs> so, <laughs> It's, it's just not assuming that everything's about you, right? You, you know that, like, I mean, sometimes it's your fault, sure, but it, it's not always about you. Like, you can't internalize every single thing that comes your way. And um, even, even if you make a mistake, you own it and just say, like, look, I've gotten through this before. I'm going to get through it again, you know, and, and just let her have the emotion she has like don't try to control it don't try to fix it don't try to undo it but just be totally honest and live with the pain for a little bit yeah i love it and let's all give hans like a ver you know a virtual thumbs up and a fist palm for saying that in front of his wife fuck yeah dude i love it so he's owning his truth look at that so she this is interesting so thank you, Hans. I totally love it. So you live with that pain for a while. David Data, right? It's better for a man to live with pain in his heart than to deny his true feelings, than to deny his true experience. Does not mean you vomit that experience on somebody else, but it's better to live with that so that you don't shove it down and become a cold asshole or explode later on, right? So Cynthia, what does it feel like when a man shoves these things down and doesn't own his truth? Yeah, let's start with that. What does that feel like? Yeah, I think the the shoving down, even though it might feel like it's protecting the space or not dumping on someone else, 
your woman, women in your life uh, have like that spidey sense. They're so much wired to pick up on the emotional state of those around them that they're going to feel that something is there. And the unknown always can become monstrous proportions of, you know, they don't know if you're angry, they don't know if you're sad, they don't know if you're hiding something, you don't, they don't know whether they can trust you. And so the way to alleviate that is even though it might cause, you know, some aggravated or pain in the moment, as Han said, is to, to not shove it down, to have frame and container for your truth and let it be there because it's actually serving the relationship, serving uh, her, what she picks up on so much more to have it out in, in the open than locked up inside where it's an unknown and then she can add her own mm. story to it. Yeah. Yeah. Very well said. So let me, let me step forward. Right. So we're owning our truth. We have like that pain within us. Okay. We go take it to the men. We go post in the forum right? We start learning this work. So we're three months in, we're six months in, we're 12 months in, something like that. And we feel more grounded as a man. We're using these tools. We're following what the, what, you know, Jeff and the books and you and C-Note and Andy, Rob and Jason are teaching us, right? You're posting in the forum and everyone's like, yeah, you're doing the right stuff. And your wife doesn't like that. Mm -hmm. She's upset about that. Okay. What would you, what kind of insight would you give the man in that spot? The, her upsetness is okay. And it, I mean, it kind of depends on, is she shaming you and trying to like push you back, like down is what your truth is. Does it affect her own stuff? Does it bring up pain and fear for her? Uh, so if it's a, like, she's trying to push you back down, that's okay. You continue moving your shoulders forward and you understand, but you don't change your course. If it's really affecting her in a, in a fear place or a tender place, it's can you meet that with compassion and true empathy while also not budging for a moment from your, from your truth and from your path? And I think that's the com combination. And a woman in your life doesn't truly want you to change your path, your frame. She truly does want your empathy and understanding of, of how that affects her. And that's what she's seeking deep down, um, however it is expressed. Because women deeply, deeply, they're one of their primary needs is to feel understood. And if they, if that's happening, it, the details of what's occurring doesn't really matter. Yeah. The, and so that's, again, I love it. That was beautifully said. Again, there's one thing to hear this, right? And, or to say it. And it's another thing to integrate it into your body over time. That's why there's never a quick fix to this. If you want to buy the, you know, 1999 fix this overnight bullshit, like go ahead and throw your $20 away. But that's not what this is about. You got to connect with other men that are doing this work like this. You've got to practice in ways that aren't 10 out of 10 triggering for you, like with other men or like in other ways in the world or certain practices, you know, that we give you as well, right? And if you're not yet on our free Facebook forum, get out there. If you want to contact me or us or Andy, Rob and Jason one-on-one, -on -one, post on the forum or go to greatmenmovemountains.com slash contact. And if you want to request one of us in particular, put their name in. If you want to talk with Andy or Rob or Jason or Cynthia, put their name in. Otherwise, I'm the one that's going to respond to you. The first call is, you know, no charge. I'll draw you the map. That's how it goes. This is about me giving my heart first. So let's go ahead and jump in. I didn't have time yesterday. We could keep talking about that. I love it, Cynthia. Thank you so much. That's brilliant. Don't take, uh, don't score yourself off of how she's feeling in the moment. Okay. Don't have a scoreboard attached to her facial expressions or her body language. It's going to steer you wrong. Okay, so don't attach yourself to her moods, just like cutting the uh, thermometer like Tim Wade, you know, would talk about. Okay, let's go and jump into Cynthia's sexcapade spot. Here we go. Get in on the inside Cynthia's sexcapade spot for today. Take it away, Cynthia, please. 
Yeah, well, there's a, we all know, of course, about the wonderful, incredible G-spot in a woman's body and what kind of sensation and orgasm that can create for her. But there's a way to activate that kind of stimulation for her actually on the outside of her body. Um, the G-spot area is actually more than just one spot. It's all this part of the front of the vaginal wall that when it experiences stimulation, activates so much of her body. And when you're when you're stimulating this on the outside of her body, you actually can help a woman who might be struggling a little bit with you to feel or orgasm just through her clitoris, or even if for some reason you being inside of her, she is emotionally or physically not turning on as much as would be helpful. So here's how you can do this on the outside of her body and create a turn on for her that can not only arouse her incredibly, but create those kind of orgasms in her body that vibrate and ricochet through every part of her from toes to fingertips. So you can apply pressure to the G-spot on the outside. And it's, of course, it's not just this one spot. It's the whole front of her, of her vaginal wall. So you touching that uh, in this lower part of her abdomen, it's about uh, like four fingers below her navel or two fingers up from her pubic bone can can do the same thing for her and actually create a wider experience where it's not just G-spot, it's that whole front of the, the vaginal wall. So the pressure on the outside of her lower abdomen can stimulate it. The stimulation um, in controls the entire, it's like clitoral urethrovaginal complex, which is the CUV for short. So it, in, in stimulating this, you're also including the internal clitoris, which is the legs of the clitoris that straddle the, va the vagina. And stimulating the CUV complex tends to recruit multiple sensory nerves in the body and activates corresponding sensory pleasure processing places in the brain. So again, this is one of those magical spots that really have a full bang for their buck. So again, it's uh, if you're you can imagine your woman where her G spot is, but just on the outside of her body, you can put four fingers down from her belly button or two fingers up from her pubic bone, and then you press in about an inch. There needs to be um, a moderate amount of pressure, and then you can roll around in circles for her. You can push up and down, but this also can be stimulated if you are inside of her and she's on her stomach. Uh, she can roll up a towel underneath this area of her body and it's going to do the same exact thing. It's a feeling for her of the stimulation that's liquid, that's warm, that makes her crave deep penetration. And it is uh, a way that you might be able to access her arousal when, again, clitoral and inside of her, you know, she's still kind of struggling to meet you more in those areas. Yeah. So I was picturing a, maybe a small pillow you can put under her stomach if you're, if she's flipped over on her stomach as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what's, I didn't know, I, Cynthia's sex paid spot every day, you know, she does every day and prepares for us. I didn't, I don't know what she's going to speak about and talk about. So let me say real quick that actually yesterday, and I've told this to different men that that exact spot you just said four fingers down from the navel is where you can put your hand at any other time, as long as she's wanting even hugs from you, right? You got to be on at least a hug level. You can put your hand four, four fingers down from there and you don't have to be pressing in as much. This is kind of like during intercourse and things, right? Like more for orgasm. Yeah. But you put your hand there because that's where most humans, many, many humans carry their trauma, carry their sexual trauma or other forms of trauma is in their pelvis. Same with a man. Um, I got a vasectomy a few months ago and I've talked about this and I was carrying some like, I had a lot of pain guys 
from from that and i can tell that story another time but like one of the reasons is because i bonked it during sex about three weeks after i got <laughs> so it wasn't just it wasn't because of the surgeon but i had quite a lot of pain and then there was that tentativeness of you know your body is saying well that that hurt last time so you know this whole kind of thing and I asked Cynthia to put her hand on that spot. And I did a practice, which I've shared with you guys, and I can share another time for, for sense of time here, um, which is that that can release trauma. So if you do this, if you put your hand there or you do this during sex and your woman, and your woman starts to cry, okay, that's a good thing. That's an expression of her um, pent up you know, emotions or trauma or her femininity in some way. So just embrace that, just, you know, smile be there with her like you, you can just say nice comforting things like yes you know i love how you do this with me i'm here with you you're safe or just make it sound like mm, okay those kind of things will comfort her and move her forward or if you're you know having wild sex and this is something that you're just trying because you want to give her the fourth orgasm you can make more of a guttural noise like oh yeah and, okay <laughs> this kind of a thing makes a huge difference makes is that fair to say Oh, yes, absolutely. Especially the guttural sound. That's yes. And I'll be practicing that <laughs> within the next 24 hours. That's my 24. So good to see you guys. Thank you, Cynthia. That was fantastic. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks for being here. You guys are fantastic. Chris, Andy, Dave, Bernard, Ian, Leandro, Hans, Jordan, Bruce. Thanks for being here, man. Hope to see you again. Randy was here. Bradbury, Patrick, JT, and Richard. Patrick, you're fantastic. Thanks for keeping me honest and being here. Patrick is the <laughs> OG and he always will be. Look at that. I just rhymed. Booyah. Have a great rest of your day, gentlemen. Ciao. Get more affection, love, and sex in your marriage. Get less paralyzing fear and rejection. Never miss an episode. Watch anytime, anywhere, 3 a.m. on the toilet. Get full episodes. Greatmenmovemountains.com forward slash VIP. The C Note Show.